Welcome, my name is Nicola Harrison. I am the Assistant Director of uh, the Sika Center for Art and Ecology. And it's my pleasure to welcome you tonight to the resident talk. Sika is located at Cascade Head on the North Central Coast and resides on the unceded traditional lands of the indigenous people now represented by the Confederate tribes of Grand Ronde and the Confederate tribes of Siletz Indians. There is so much to learn as just one step we can take, especially when planning a visit to the Sitka Center or the coast. We encourage you to visit the Grand Ron Chukchula Museum and Cultural Center. It is such a vibrant and exciting museum. I'm joined tonight by co-host Nancy Newman, who is here to introduce the first night's presenters. Nancy? Hello, everyone. My name is Nancy Newman as Nicola said, and I serve as the administrative coordinator for the Sitka Center. Our first speaker tonight, Intisar Abioto, is an explorer artist working across photography, dance, and writing, moving from the visionary and embodied root of Black girl Southern cross, temporal cross-modal storytelling ways. Her works refer to the living breath and breadth of people of African descent against the expanse of their storied geographic and imaginative landscapes. Working in long form projects that encompass the visual, folkloric, documentary, and performing arts, she has produced the People Could Fly project, the Black Portlanders, and the Black. Abioto is the recipient of a 2018 Oregon Humanities Emerging Journalists Award Community Stories Fellowship. She has performed and or exhibited at Ori Gallery, Portland Art Museum, Duplex Gallery, Photographic Center Northwest, African American Museum in Philadelphia, Poetry Press Week, Design Week Portland, Spelman College, Powell's City of Books, University of Oregon White Box Gallery, Portland State University, Reed College, and Zilka Gallery, among others. She was also selected for Art in the Governor's Office solo exhibition in 2019. Her publication, Black Portlands, documents interviews with Black Portlanders alongside her photographs. She was a contributing photographer to MFON, Women Photographers of the African Diaspora in 2017. And her photographs illustrated the Urban League of Portland State of Black Oregon, 2015. Together with the five women artists in her family, she is the co-founder of Studio Abioto, a multivalent creative art studio and and it's in and Intisar lives in Portland, Oregon. Excuse me. Please make some noise wherever you are and welcome Intisar to the Sitka Center. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I always have a plan and then I always know that I will diverge from the plan. So um, in the next eight minutes, a few words. Uh, one, thanks. Thanks, uh, everyone here. Um, and and also um, to the artists who came to this to this residency. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna start out with a few photos and just talk through the images. Uh, yeah, so you know, I think photography is such a wild pursuit because you're kind of photographing things uh, intuitively, and then over time you see your own patterns. So this is actually a photo graph of one of the uh, participants, a Kayla Jaffe that I made in Portland last year. Uh, and I love this photo so much. Uh, and also this artist in person. Um, and yeah, I'm interested. This is also, this is my mom, Midnight. Um, this is a, outside of um, Sisters, Oregon, kind of close to uh, Caldera arts, another uh, arts space. Another photo of a Kayla, which I love. Uh, this is a sister of mine and also also, also my mom um, out at the Sitka Center 
uh, the first time we came, I believe in like May 2021. Uh, this is an image that I made at Sitka. I think the second to last time I was there, I think last summer, I was kind of working with uh, with transparencies of of my own photographs um, in the space on the um, on that eighty acre preserve that's there. So this is an image of another artist. It's, it's, artist Sidonia O'Neill um, at the Sitka Center space, or or rather on that land. Uh, this is a photo of my sister Aminta Abiyoto um, here in Portland. Another photo at Sitka, kind of once again using those transparencies. I'm gonna push through some of these images. Another photo of my mom. And this is a photo of artists um, Adrian Cruz, um, who was a, a previous participant of this Black Artist Gathering residency at Sitka Center uh, that we had in, 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 in December. This is the house uh, up there. So just a few images to give some context to um, the next words. Uh, yes, I'm interested in us being in space. Um, you know, I'm interested in in black artists um, and also, you know, black people, but also, you know, uh, black women, black femmes, black 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 non-binary folks. Like, you know, within that whole expansiveness, how we exist and feel on the land. Um, and I, I sense that as a something that's pushing forth in my work um also yes uh, this is another photo of a kayla i love this one so much i love the line here um so just works that i was working on uh, this is another photo of adrian cruz in portland i here i love kind of this kind of how her hair kind of merges with this tree here i i and i love us being at rest you know, which is also a big part of uh, the time at Sitka Center and also the focus of Black Artists Gathering, which is really about Black artists uh, connected to Portland and Oregon, but who knows, perhaps other places. Uh, just having time to be at rest, to imagine, to dream, uh, to be supported and, and, and like, and thus the art, and thus the art emanating from there. Um, this is a photo of my sister Kalima Abiyoto um, at at Sitka the last time. I should I think this is this the, uh, there was a red alder that kind of fell down in the storm and we kind of moved some of the the wood out of the road. But just looking at that piece, you know, this was all in the road and just how beautiful, um, just the kind of tangible um, experience of that. This is my mom um, up there on that land. She's just just kind of funny and stylish. So this is her. This is Latoya Lovely, uh, one of the residents in at the at the previous court uh, cohort. Um, there, I love this image. You know, uh, yes, this is this is an uh, and yes. So this is the previous cohort. I just want to say their just want to say th to say their names uh it was adrian cruz latoya lovely bridget hickey uh, J uh jasmine and yende bukola koiki um um uh, midnight abioto von kimmins and and lisa jarrett um yeah so i don't have a great deal bit more to say i just wanted to give some context Oh, uh, this is this cohort at dinner. Just just seeing everyone together. Uh, this is this is a moment uh, where Silver and and the child of one of the participants were like working on a piece together. So just these kind of moments that you can't anticipate, but 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 that come together just from this experience of gathering. 
um, which I love. Um, yeah, so this was us out there together on the land. I love these images. Yes, so I think that's about it for me. I'm just gonna kind of leave it for the other artists to kind of share about whatever is important to them. Um, yeah. That last photo is so wonderful, and Tassar. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, and thank you for creating these two curated residency experiences for all these amazing people. It was such a joy to meet to meet each one. Um, someone said gorgeous photographs i love how they occupy the natural space and akela says beautiful work indeed <laughs> uh so uh without any further ado we are welcoming silver silver is an afro indigenous queer non-binary creative polymath interdisciplinary artist performer and advocate Silver's work is an ode to their creative ancestors and means to explore metaphysics, sovereignty, and identity. They were the 2017 Lila Jewel Award winner of the Oregon's MRG Foundation. Their work has been featured in San Diego Union Tribune on the Today Show and KUSI News. In 2020, Silver was featured via National Geographic, Willamette Week, and Oregon Public Broadcasting for their contributions in the movement of Black Lives. From San Diego, California, Silver has resided in, Port in Portland since 2017. Please give Silver a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, pardon that delay. I was inspired by um, the way that Intasar shared some images. So I figured I would gather some myself to kind of get some context to uh, who I am, the work that I do, so on and so forth. But um, yeah, I kind of just want to start out by saying again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to Intasar for this invitation to be a part of this wonderful opportunity. Thank you to Sitka Center uh, also for hosting us. Um, you know, the space was really majestic and inspiring in and of itself. Um, I love what Intasar said about, um, you know, Black artists and Black people just, you know, having an opportunity to rest, having an opportunity to be engaged in nature um, and to be inspired. I, I think all of these things, I'll speak for myself, are precursors to my creative process or at least an integral part of them. Um, I feel more inspired to create uh, when I do feel a level of oneness and resonance with my environment. Um, and just to be, you know, in this space surrounded by all these Black artists from this community that I have gotten to know over the past eight years or almost eight years now um, of living in Portland from San Diego was just a blessing, energetically speaking. Um, so yeah, I, you know, wanted this, this talk to be sort of organic and to leave some space for uh, spontaneity so I'm seeing some commentary in the chat. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything that I shouldn't be. Um, oh, Dana, hello. Um, <laughs> so I think, um, you know, yes, I'm going to share some images and talk through them. But I'm also curious if anyone in the audience or any of the artists here um, or any of the folks at Sitka have any initial thoughts or questions that they would like to pose um, and, you know, as I prepare to share um with you all and if not um feel free to you know let me know if, if anything comes up so i'm going to share my screen now uh let's see there we go yes that paint this painting is called telepathy so i'm showing you a little bit of my abstract work i also work representationally which i'll get to that in a second um here is a mural um at black owned event space in portland here um on mlk boulevard louisa pdx um, that was painted several years ago. Uh, this is the garden goddess. I love what Intasar said about celebrating uh, Black women, Black femmes, Black non-binary folks um, with all of that, with all of that goodness and everything that comes there. Um, this is a flyer that I just found as I was looking for images. Um, 
for an event that I organized uh, for Juneteenth in 2021 with a local organizer um, named Spirited Justice. And this was a sound bath. Um, so my art practice also extends out of, outside of the realm of uh, painting and visual art, um, visual arts, but I also um, am involved in, yeah, interdisciplinary creative practices. And a lot of my work also is centered around uh, bringing community together. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the archetypal gatekeeper. Yes. Um, this was, so this was painted live. I wonder if I have an, a picture of the live painting. Um, I was at an event um, and I believe this might've been 2017 and I did this as a live painting. Um, the event that I was at was centered around, at the time, I think community was coming together to discuss um, some recent uh, police brutality incidents that had occurred. And, you know, my job as a live painter was to try to bring, you know, some level of this, this ethos of the conversation to, um, to the creative process that I was facilitating in front of people while having conversation. And uh, this archetypal gatekeeper character came up for me um, as like a divine, um, you know, masculine being, a divine masculine energy um, who is you know, watching over um, the gates um, that, you know, uh, where, where, where Black folks are being met after being wrongful, wrongfully, um, you know, after dealing with the things that, 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 that our folks often deal with. Uh, I won't expound upon that one much more at the moment, but I think y'all get where I'm going. Um, this is a flyer that I designed for a vision board event um, that I facilitated last year with Rashonda of YGB Portland, which stands for Young, Gifted and Brown, Young, Gifted and Black Portland, um, an opportunity for Black and Brown artists and visionaries and creatives and people to come together and to kind of have a mid-year check-in about our goals and visions. And again, just continuing that dreaming. I think that, um, you know, I think that all humans, are creative, imaginary beings, and um, that we can use our imagination to create better futures and better outcomes. This is uh, some uh, multimedia uh, work, an example of a self-portrait that I did inspired by the movie Black Panther and also inspired by um, tried and true, well-known artist Frida Kahlo um, and all of her glory and self-portraiture. That's another image of the mural in the space. And then here is um, a GIF of like the Black Genius Coloring Book, a contemporary Black Genius Coloring Book that I uh, illustrated, uh, I believe this was also around 2017 or so, um, which features contemporary Black um, painters, uh, musicians, activists, writers, um, poets, uh, athletes, so on and so forth. Um, and then, yeah, bring it back to, to Sitka Center. Um, you know, here's a moment in the Boyden studio, um, as Intasar shared, um, where I had, okay, let me see if I have a picture of the canvas to the setup. Okay, so I had these canvas, these uh, wooden cradle boards set up in the space where we were having dinner. And um, yes, Mia's daughter came over to me and said, hey, can we paint? And I was like, you know what? Yes, let's actually paint because I've been way too precious about what's gonna happen on these surfaces. And if I keep thinking about it, <laughs> I'm never gonna paint anything. So, you know, I had planned to actually gesso these wooden boards first, but, you know, in the spirit of spontaneity, I was like, I'm just gonna go with this. Um, and we ended up creating something very beautiful together. Yeah, here's an image that I took on the water, uh, next to the water at Sitka. Um, this image, I don't know, just feels very grounding to me. Um, I really enjoy just the vastness of the scenery um, in this space. And here's a better image of um, me painting uh, with this beautiful young artist. 
essentially what happened was everything she did on the right side of the painting, I tried to emulate on the left side of the painting. And she literally stayed on the right side the entire time. So it actually created this really cool back and forth. Um, and we probably did this for what felt like 30 minutes or 45 minutes until she said she was tired <laughs> and we went to bed. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. And thank you. Thank yeah. you, Silver, so much for sharing your work. Um, that was so special, um, the collaborative painting. Our next speaker is Akela Jaffe. Akela is a multidisciplinary artist working in Portland, Oregon. Training since the age of 14, dance is the craft in which she feels most at home. Movement is her method of connecting with spirit as well as her ritual for achieving the comings and goings of everyday life. Archiving, I'm so sorry, archiving the comings and goings of everyday life. Akela is the creator of Bass, an artist's showcase focused on uplifting Black performers of all mediums. She works to inspire younger generations of Blackness through her production work and intends on creating for the studio, stage, and screen for the rest of her life. Please give a warm Sitka welcome to Akela. Thank you. This is so lovely. Also, I'm over here like, oh, I love this. Um, I also want to say thank you to Sitka for having us. It was, I can't express like enough how special it was to me. And I will express more how special it was to me in this eight minutes. But I do want to say thank you to y'all. And I want to say thank you to Intasar for thinking of me, for thinking of all of us, and for really diligently uh, doing the work of advocating for Black art in this city. And it operates on layers and you and your family do really amazing work at like rippling through so many layers of our community. And you're one of the artists in this city that I, I come in contact with your work more than anyone's. And I'm always like, it's my friend, but it's so beautiful how many people know you and how many people have the same uh, treasured, exceptional experience of you. So I know everyone who's watching this, who knows Intasar feels the same way and we could gush about you forever. Um, but I'm just like eternally grateful for this experience. I am a multidisciplinary artist and I have been in these last few years really working to figure out what it means for me to work as artist full time, which for those of y'all who don't know means I want to be able to pay my rent and my bills and my life off of my art. Um, which I don't know many artists my age who are able to do that, and especially in this city. Um, I have been dancing for almost 20 years, and it is definitely a huge part of my life. I'm currently working on a residency under a woman named Subashini, who has a space called the New Expressive Works, and it's a like co collaborative space where she does residencies every year where different dancers come and create a cohort and we do a community show at the end of the year and it's been a process and I intended to go to Sitka and work on these pieces and work on dance and to really be in a choreographing space and I was really surprised to find that I like barely moved my body at all and I actually ended up sitting and drawing and painting for like hours on end like to the point where there were times where I was like wow dog you just have been in the same chair for like 10 hours like I binged I won't tell you how much snowfall but a lot of it but I was able to create a lot of pieces and I was really able to um almost like cycle through myself if that makes sense sort of a lot of times like how a fish tank is like doing that self-filtration thing I feel like I like replaced my filter when I got to Sitka and I just kind of sat in this water for two weeks and let it like clean itself and doing this physical practice of drawing like I draw I write I, I sing I dance and I produce events and shows and so this visual art is probably the only practice that my ego isn't really at the table very much it's it's really peaceful for me 
and a lot of my other stuff there's that voice that's sitting right here that's like are you sure this is good enough and are you sure that the audience is gonna like it and shouldn't we maybe edit this differently and so having this practice where I could really just be with myself I think I allowed a lot of processing to happen really naturally and I ended up doing a lot of creative work on my other projects just sort of in this meditative state brainstorming and thinking things out and talking things out with myself and really this time helped me get back to a spiritual practice that I didn't really have wasn't making as much time for as I would like to basically and when I think about Sitka my best friend loves Cascade Head and they told me about this land for years and how special it is and a lot of the history of sort of the vegetation and the tribal history and the wildlife history. And so I already sort of knew what it was and I went, but when I got there, I really could feel this like regenerative peace and this sort of restorative nature of the space. And I thought so much just about the, the sort of, for lack of better words, impending doom of capitalism and I thought a lot about what freedom looks like embodied and how for me, freedom is I can wake up and just sit and have a cup of coffee and my brain's not like, I got to do 14 things and I got to pay my bills and I got to call my mom and I got to attend to this thing. And I never paid that bill last year and they're calling me about it. Like there's all these layers to being a human that I realized were a large part of the impact they were having on my mind and my spirit and my creative process was kind of consistently being in this like American bubble that we're in, you know, and so being in the forest and being like you turn the lights off or in the darkness and no one can call you and even if they could you're like I'm in the middle of the woods like there was no there was no constant reminder of what was happening when I got on the internet, it, I didn't want to be there because I was like, well, I'm in the woods. So like the sounds all are louder now and the chatter was really loud out there. So I was able to really just detach from a lot of the, the scripts I'd been reading without even realize I was realizing I was reading them. So I, I too was really touched by the freedom of it. I was touched by the possibility of it. And it was also sort of a, a saddening and a sombering realization that in order for, I now speak for myself as a Black artist, because I'm trying as an adult to stop lumping all Black people in together and thought because we're all such expansive beings and deserve to advocate for ourselves. And I will say as a Black artist, it is incredibly hard to, it's some days incredibly hard to be both a woman and black and then queer and then coming from you know maybe a lower class family or growing up impoverished or coming from mental health crisis or coming from systemic racism crisis or coming from systemic poverty crisis like I am a trickle down of a lot of these things that I work almost perilously to fight against so that I can be beautiful and be in a bio like I'm an artist and what I want my bio to say is I'm so tired and I want someone to fund me fifty thousand dollars every year so that I can just make my work but my bio is like I'm a multidisciplinary artist and I absolutely love this hustle because I do and I will do it until the day I die but this trip really helped me solidify the were it up to us and were freedom something that was passed down generationally to American Blacks, this type of lifestyle that I live in the woods and I'm really serious about my trash and my recycling and my light pollution, like I'd love to live like that. And I, I got to see sort of a glimmer of what future hope space setting can be like for us as a people. And I do think that there is this generational work, like we have realizations that then the next generation, the generation after that are affected by that positively. And I have hopes for that. So I do, I do really feel like this kind of work permeates through our community and that all of us who are creatives and who talk to other people are gonna bring this kind of peace and understanding back. and. 
before I, I end talking, I do want to share with my work. So I'm going to try to stop rambling, but I do just want to say for people who are watching this or for people who are donors of the arts or for people who maybe wonder if it's as hard as we say it is, like I would, uh, I would push people who are donors of the arts to seek outside of the regular streams that you send your money and your resources to. And I would ask you to reach out to artists like Intisar and to say, hey, I'm interested in funding Black education. I'm interested in funding Black sciences. I'm interested in funding Black arts, this specific type. Do you know anyone who works in clay? Do you know anyone who works in murals? Whatever it is, we are the deepest network. We have so many people. So it is, it's sometimes discouraging when I'm like, oh, nice. I'm, I love to see funding go to Whitebird every year. And I love to see funding go to X, Y, and Z every year, but I'm excited for there to be sort of this conversation that allows for our community to truly be, you know, moving through the gates that are kept that have that sort of like fine art funding, because at the end of the day, Black culture is what is holding the torch for culture period and for the arts and anything that's being funded is probably already being inspired by the local black artists anyway so i would push you to go directly to the source and to reach out directly to people because we all want to work and i would love to make a competitive rate to do what i do um so yeah i really appreciate everyone for taking your time and thank you to the artists who have clicked in to watch this and hi Darlene and just hi to everyone who did this prior to us and to all the black artists out there who are just pushing so hard all the time I love y'all and you're beautiful and you're perfect and you're so talented and someone's about to write you a big old check babe so before I leave I do want to share my work and I have this little janky webcam so do excuse my okay it's cute so these are, this is the stuff I made while I was at Sitka. I'll try to be real, not shaky, but I can't tell if this is, oh, it's upside down. Okay, here we go. So I work with, gosh, guys, sorry, my analog mind. Okay, I work mostly with pen and ink. Um, and I have been working a lot with my X-Acto knife recently and trying to kind of layer my works. And I know that these are totally off center, but these are some things that I worked on while I was at Sitka. These are all, these black ones are sketched and then drawn out with paint pen. Oh Lord. Yeah, you kind of get the gist. I hate that I'm doing it in this bootleg way, but I just wanted to show these. And some of these took like very long. And I was really like this one, I think I sat and I maybe watched an entire Apple TV show, like a whole season while I worked on it. And it was great to have this really slow process to truly be able to test things. And um, I never really give myself the time to sketch with pencil. I usually just start straight with pen. So it was really beautiful to be like, you can take as long as you want for these things. So thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate y'all. Thanks to other artists for listening to my long windedness at our debrief at the end of the trip as well. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing all of that. And thank you for being so transparent. So for our next guest, I'd like to introduce Licity Collins. Licity enjoys a wide ranging career as a conceptual artist, giving voices or giving voice, excuse me, to things too often left unsaid or whispered. Her conceptual works revel in cognitive dissonance in the gallery, on stage, and in the street. With tools from music to spoken word to house paint to electrical devices to hand sewn te textiles to her own body. Licity helped found groundbreaking institutions, including Justjecta Arts, now known as Oregon Contemporary, Defunct Theater, and the Women's Prison Theater Project. Her work is included in several art history books and taught in universities around the world. NPR called Licity's creations courageous writing and singing full frontal. Please give Licity a warm welcome. Hey, everybody. I'm going to pop my 
link up in the chat. I don't know if somebody needs to send that to all the every people's out there. But um, hi, it's so great to be here. And hi, I checked right when I came in, I saw a few of my um, community members and membership members on there. So I guess I quit hi to Rhonda and Anna and Jane. So happy you're there. And anybody else? Um, oh, my heart is beating, which it just does when something is important. So I just, this was a really important experience, I think, for all of us. And I'll just echo the gratitude to Sitka and to Intazar for visioning a space for all of us. It was profound. It was profound. I had to tell people, like, I came home, I was like, Matt, I don't, I'm not talking to anybody. Like, I just leave me alone. I'm in a very profound space. And everyone went, okay, yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really deep. So, I just wanna share a little bit about what I did while I was at Sitka. I've attended a bunch of these artist talks and I always wanna know like, what did you do when you were there? So um, that's what I wanna share specifically about and bring you inside that process. And I'm hoping to be brief. I, this is a new project. It's really hard to talk about in brief. I don't have a pitch for it yet. So we'll get into, we'll see how it goes. I did time myself though. All right, so I'm looking at Nicola. All right, so, all right, here we go, share screen. All right, so my name is Lissity Collins, and yeah, I define myself as a multidimensional genre busting artist. Every genre I try to get in, people are like, but you know, you're pushing the boundaries of it. It's, what are you doing? And I'm like, I guess I'm just genre busting, leave it alone. So, you know, my slogan is kind of like, whatever it takes, like whatever it takes, you know? So if uh, a concept comes to me and it requires me to like, you know, do spoken word, like in one of these pictures, great, if it requires me to do a performance where somebody's picking me up and dropping me on the floor, awesome, let's do that. Like if I'm painting on somebody's walls, the colors of my skin, fantastic, let's do that. If I'm panhandling on the street, like in the, one of those pictures in the bottom, that's what I do. So I'm really lucky to have a career that calls on me in lots of different ways. I'm never bored and I'm always learning something new. And, um, and I came to Sitka to do just that, do something I have never done before <laughs> and to figure out how to do it. And so the project I'm working on at the moment, oh, and by the way, like 10 years ago, I moved to this tiny town in Southern California and bought a guitar, which, you know, like changed my life tremendously. So now I'm back. This, this project is that I'm working on now is kind of like, everything you know it's everything that I do now in one container so um this is me at the Sitka Center that's me in Gray House you can see um one of the other artists uh, spaces outside my window and I just came and set up and I spent most of my time sitting right there there making tea back to there sitting on the deck oh there was this great little kind of window seat I spent a lot of time in that but I'm going to talk about that in a second and the project I'm working on at the moment is called One Death in Seven Doorways. And it's what I'm calling a spoken word opera. And that was the only like term I could kind of come up for with it for, because uh, I just released last year a collection of spoken word pieces, stories that were um, then scored by solo musicians. So voice and instruments, which I'll get to in a second. I can't remember the order of my slides. Um, and so I started to think about, there was one character in that, in that collection of stories that called to me and I was like, this guy's got more to say. So I knew I was gonna spend more time with him. So I started writing a collection of essays in his voice or I started to conceive of this collection. And then um, I had written a few of them and then I went and I spent time in nature and I was walking, hiking in a creek, like in, or in the water. And this piece spoke to me and just said, this is not two dimensional, this is three dimensional. This is on stage. This isn't a black spot stage. These this piece has bodies speaking your words, musicians moving around with those bodies. That's what, that's what we're doing. And then it said, and you're gonna do it in Portland. <laughs> it was like, and you can't do that down here. Not gonna work, you gotta move. So that's basically how I ended up here and my art brought me here. And so I came to uh, Sitka with, 12, uh, with seven essays kind of written from the point of view of this character. And what I left with was 12 scenes 
with eight actors, a singer, nine solo musicians, there's an aria, there's a suite, there's projections. It took shape. Like I wanted it to take, I, I wanted to come to Sitka, let it take shape, get it on the page so I could start seeing what it was. And so um, that's how it started. And like I said, it started with this collection called A Flower in the Mirror Was Dead, where I paired with several different collaborators and we composed together. So each one of these collaborators underscored a uh, spoken word piece of mine. And it was really a powerful process. So the sounds range from, um, you know, classical bassoon, like Andy's the principal bassoonist at the Santa Barbara Symphony, to Amanda, who's like a punk rock drummer I've known since third grade. And so there's these really interesting sounds that, that come together um, to create the voice underneath the characters, if that makes sense. And it was classified as 20th century contemporary, which is uh, of classical, 21st century, like contemporary classical music, which was exciting to me. And I started to think, um, you know, where, what is the potential for this type of work? So of that, and there was this one piece featuring that drummer called Rest, and there were these two characters in it. And, um, and like I said, one of them I kind of fell in love with. I knew he had more to say. And in the process of, of opening myself to his voice and what he wanted to say, Amanda called me and let me know that a really dear friend of ours had died. And this friend was so dear that like I had gone to I had gone to prom with him in 10th grade and she went to prom with him in 11th grade like he was like a dear dear friend I had spoken to him three weeks before and now he was he just literally made coffee one day and dropped dead. And so when I went back to see my character his friend had also died. And that happens in our lives, you know, when we are open to the lives of create our creative others, these characters that come through us, we have to ask them what's going on with you. So I sat down and I asked him like, what's up? What are we gonna write about? And he was like, you know what, she's dead. And I was like, oh, okay, so how are we gonna write about that? So the piece became this meditation on death. And I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but he, his character in this spoken word opera is played by um, eight different people who all look different from each other because when someone we love dies, it fractures us. And so, and she's played by one person who after she dies, she no longer is able to speak, she sings. And so it becomes this, you know, interesting view into what happens when we lose someone we love. And I think it's amazing that the, um, <laughs> the idea of rest has been evoked in this series of little talks because I was sitting here putting my talk together and I was like, what's that stupid Pablo Picasso quote I hate? And I was like, oh yeah. So I looked it up and it's like, I don't even think he said this. People just make up stuff and attribute it to like Pablo Picasso usually um, or Ben Franklin, you know what I mean? So whatever. So Pablo Picasso, Inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. This is like the most oppressive, depressing, horrible quote you can give an artist. It's like, oh, well, I'm not good enough. I'm never working. I'll never be inspired. So I was like, oh, that's not my experience. My experience is inspiration does exist, but it loves to find you at rest. And this piece, the first piece where I met this character, I literally that day in my studio, I was like, I got to do this. Nope, you're not going to. I got to do this. Nope. And I literally said, I guess I'm just gonna sit here. And I sat still and I heard the first line of that piece and now I'm at an opera, right? So that's how it works. And Sitka is magical because it lets you rest. My process at Sitka was like, sit. Okay, write for five hours. You know, it was just like, that's what happened. I sat still, I made tea, I basked in the sun. I listened to the beautiful sound of silence. I need so much silence to do this work well. We can all, everybody can do the work. When you want to do it well, <laughs> you need some silence. And that's what Sitka gifted me, was this, in, this incredible silence, except for the refrigerator. The refrigerator was so loud because there was no other noise. There was no other noise. And then the refrigerator would come on and I'd be like, what is happening to my world? So I literally wrote a scene into the script called Death to All Refrigerators. So Sitka is with me. It's in the script in three different ways, actually. Okay, so here is my, here's Gray House. That's my computer in the window. That's where I would sit, have tea. That's my setup. 
here's my notes. This is me figuring out scenes and uh, essays into scenes. And here's what I ended up with by the end of the two weeks, which is really fun for me. So cast notes. Um, the characters' names are Susie and Sam. And if anybody who's a nerd of 70s music can tell me why, I'm going to give you a really big gift. Um, and then here's the scenes. Oops, here's the scenes. And here's a, a little bit about just how it looks. So you can see like she's always voiced by electric guitar because I believe that that sound is the sound of the soul. And then he has different characters. Sometimes he's drums. So he's, here's a different version of him. I don't know who that instrument is yet. We'll see. And that's how it's working. That's what I did at Sitka. It was an incredible gift. I'm now back like every minute working on this. It's just really been an incredible process and that silence and that rest. And the profound also, and this is the last thing I'll say about that, the profound impact that knowing other artists are there in the woods with you sitting at their desk for 10 hours for getting to eat like a Kayla was, you know, or like being in the space, being in whatever they need to be in is really profound as well. It's very, very supportive. Um, and I also wanted to like just echo that one of the other amazing things that happened while I was there is, you know, I raise money every year for my projects to pay other people, <laughs> to pay people who, who like, you know, all those musicians or other people who helped me produce the work. I have never paid myself. And I sat down and, and at Waz at Sitka had a completely spontaneous impulse to do a small crowdfunding campaign and send it to a handful of people so that I could pay myself. And there's, and somebody already sent me $500 just to write this script. So Sitka made that happen. So thank you. And please, anyone out there listening, join my community at lissycollins.com. I send a lot of love to my people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lissity, for sharing your work. That was so, um, I don't think I've ever seen in all of our resident talks this many um, hearts and thumbs ups, and I can't wait to hear the opera. Melanie Stevens is an artist, illustrator, and writer. She is the creator of the graphic novel series, Watershed, and the co-founder and co-curator of Nat Turner Project, okay. a fugitive gallery space that provides funding and spaces for artists of color to create or express their own language within and without the parameters of racial commodification or designation. She received her Bachelor of Arts degree for political science from Yale University and her MFA for visual studies at Pacific Northwest College of Art, where she currently teaches. Please join me in welcoming Melanie. Uh, thank you, Nancy, um, for that amazing intro. Um, it's been said before, but I have to say it again. Um, I am extremely thankful and grateful to Intisar for inviting me and including me in this, as well as the folks at Sitka Center for holding space for us. Um, I'm in a bit of a professional cul-de-sac in which all of my time is kind of bought um, and allocated towards administrative functions as someone in academia. So it's only these opportunities where I get to make work now. So uh, I've just... I was really like bolstered um, and rejuvenated with by my time at Sitka. Um, and I just, I thank um, all of you for like including me in this and as well as my cohort um, for being there and like the random conversations that we had, it was all just amazing. So um, with that, um, I'm going to speak briefly about my work as well as a little bit about what I made while I was at Sitka. So, so I consider myself an intermedia artist. And what that means for me is that I'm less concerned about the medium I'm working in and more focused with recurring themes. Um, as of late, my primary interest has been narrative and the ways in which the manipulation, restructuring and reclaiming of certain narratives can bring light to skewed power structures within culture. Um, for instance, this piece um, is a digital print I created in which I um, made a fake obituary set far into the future that reimagines 
long and fulfilled lives of those who have been taken from us by state sanctioned murder. Um, since 2010, I have been working in sequential art, specifically comics. Um, in 2017, I began the 10 part graphic novel series, Watershed, which uses the narrative tools of time travel and speculative fiction um, in the vein of Octavia Butler to explore racial history and violence in American culture. And here are a few pages of the opening sequence of volume one. Um, I'm currently working on the third volume, um, which will be out later on in the year. Um, while in art school, I had the opportunity and resources available to learn printmaking um, and began a series of works calling images from news media and popular culture that spoke to current events and pivotal moments in recent history. Um, this is a copper intaglio etching that I did um, in 2016. Um, here are a series of tote bags um, in which I created memes relating to my emotional, economic, and political state of being at the time. Um, during the pandemic, I started doing relief printmaking, primarily lino cuts, because I was able to print at home um, with fewer and more accessible materials and without a large press. Um, these are a couple of the prints that I made at the time. Um, So in 2016, um, me and a fellow cohort in art school, um, Maximiliano Martinez, started the organization Nat Turner Project, um, which began as a series of art exhibits um, for Black, Indigenous, and POC artists um, that started in the bathroom of our graduate studios, but since then has expanded into so much more. And now we sort of, we kind of migrate from, um, different institutions, working with them to have exhibitions. We also do mutual aid. Um, currently, um, we recently started a small printmaking studio space, um, Black Hole Press, which hosts free printmaking workshops um, within the community and also has a printmaking artist in residency program. Um, we also are hosting um, the second iteration of our Drinking Gourd Fellowship in collaboration with Ori Gallery, which is another um, Black art space. Um, and we will be awarding five unrestricted stipends as well as a three-month exhibition at the Oregon Contemporary. So finally, um, I wanted to show a few things I worked on while I was at Zitka Center. Um, I, like I mentioned earlier, I never really get time to make art. So because they have these beautiful presses there and I was the only one, um, the only printmaker at the time, I felt that this was like the perfect opportunity to sort of experiment with things that I had never really tried before. Um, so this is technically my second woodcut ever that I've ever done. Um, but um, this is a woodcut that I made um, of the all of the like the ferns. I took a bunch of pictures of ferns while I was there. Um, so this is a woodcut that I created um, entitled "The Grounds," and I and this is a, a a few pictures of the process of like drawing onto the board and then inking it up and printing it. Um, I also did um, a little bit of plexiglass etching um, in Taglio, dry point, um, because I didn't really want to use um, acid or have to burn into metal. So plexiglass is a really nice alternative. Um, and I took a lot of pictures of the surroundings. Um, and these two, this is a series that I created called Otis. Um, and here is another larger one that I did. 
And then finally, um, I attempted for the first time a reduction um, liner cut print. Um, and it's really kind of tricky um, and risky because once you start cutting um, and you finish the process, you kind of have to throw away the plate, which is why I never tried it before. Um, but this gave me the perfect opportunity to do it. Um, so it's like a multi-process um, um, in which you cut into the liner cut for each layer to create a new color. Um, so I did three layers um, and the picture on the right is the end result. Um, yeah, and so that's basically just a little bit of what I did um, while I was at Sitka. A lot of it was also resting, which is important to me. Um, and ideating and kind of just thinking about, you know, where I'm at, where I want to be, um, which also I never get any time to do. So, yeah, so that's about it. Thank you so much, Melanie. Uh, it was such a pleasure to watch you work in your studio. Not, not to sound goofy, but you were very studious. <laughs> Last resident presenter or presenter is Mia O'Connor, a multidisciplinary disciplinary artist, witch, and mother. She stewards land in Corbett with her family, raising goats, chicken, ducks, and bees, and many other plants with and for the Black Organ Land Trust creating opportunities for Black farmers in Oregon to own land, build generational health and wealth, and birth sovereign thriving communities. Mia started a BIPOC youth dance program and collaborates with many other projects and performance groups like Deep Underground, the Sun Ra Orchestra, Brown Calculus, Brown Calvin, Be Present Art Group, and the Afro Celestial, Celestial Drum Circle. Everyone, please give Mia O'Connor a warm welcome. Hello. <laughs> now my heart is like, <laughs> um, I just want to give, to start off by giving thanks and gratitude to Sarah um, for thinking of me to, to be a piece in this um, space that we're creating. Um, for for building the like the actual physical containers and like all the people who pour money into make those spaces and the stairs and the ground and the parking lots and the you know all those things even the kayaks that was really special um, to be able to to, to use um, and I'm really grateful to have been um, on that land and to experience a space where like the salmon run. Um, I've grown up in Oregon, but I've never been there to, to this land. And so to be there with my daughter, um, and it was incredible. Um, I, So I would just say that the residency was a, a full body reset for me. Um, I have moved into, I've moved to Corbett in December. Um, so I started that process of darkness and quiet um, in my home space to, to kind of like figure that out and adjust to that, which is a really scary thing to like witness yourself and be with yourself in that um, that this space um so it was great because i'm on this journey that was starting to tell me to slow down and stop doing so much um i am like 23 weeks pregnant i want to start a, am starting a farm but the physical labor of that i can't do um so the universe is like you need to sit down you need to ask people for help and then intisar was like can you do this thing? Um, so I figured out how to make it work. And I was like, oh, it's an artist residency. I should, what am I gonna do? And it was perfectly like last minute enough for me to not really come up with something to be as a um, dancer at like Root. 
I was like, I'm going to do something dance related. I'm going to go outside and dance every day. I'm going to pick a spot and just do this thing. <laughs> and as soon as I got there, I couldn't do anything. I stayed inside for, for many days. And I did, I went on walks because I brought my daughter with me. So we had to get out of the house um, at least once a day, but um yeah, that vision of me working as an artist was quickly brought to reality that like I'm the um I'm the project. I'm the um the thing that's being worked on, like me, my spirit, my body. Um, and that doesn't involve anything but <laughs> but rest and like just being. Um yeah, so that was kind of my journey through it. And I just enjoyed all the things that were there in the space. Um, I enjoyed having like an organized kitchen. I enjoyed having access to um, kayaks to to cross the water and to, oh, maybe I can share this thing. Um, yeah, I just enjoyed myself and it was really, it was, it was everything I needed. And I think everything that black artists need and especially black mothers and women, um, just to, just to be, you know, and be like paid to just be. So yeah, it was incredible. And I didn't work, actually I made candles once like for y'all. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I just rested and played and dreamed and visioned. And if you, I guess like in the future, those things and these seeds that were planted at this space, um, yeah, you just have to stay in touch with me and like, and watch and ask. Um, yeah, but it was, this was one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had in my my entire life so I just want to thank Intasar so much and this and the land like that was really that was really the biggest thing was the land and like the way that it smelled and the way that it um was so unpredictable and the hail and you know like the mess <laughs> it was perfect um let me see if I I have a video. This was, I think, my last day there. My partner was able to come and we kayaked across with our, our daughter. Um, it was really difficult and it was funny because I thought I wasn't going to get wet. So I'm out there in my cowboy boots and my layers, like, I got to stay warm because I'm on a boat. And then I... Um, you know, that didn't happen. It was really challenging, but we made it across. And then we get to this point where we're just like, should we go to the other side? And we, we kind of like go straight through and we're like, no way. And then we curve around. Um, and my daughter, Taria is just playing, like she's just running free. Um, and I go for a walk by myself to see the ocean. And this is what I got to do with my pregnant belly to like kissed by the ocean. Um, yeah, this was a really sweet moment. And I had even, I had started recording a video and I was like, wait, I have to just do this like to feel it, you know? Um, and it was a, it was a beautiful day. Is a beautiful opportunity to um, to be with the land like this. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mia. And it was so lovely to meet your entire family. And I'm glad to hear that you all three were able to enjoy your space and time here together. All right. Well, I want to go ahead and Thank everyone for coming. And thank you, Intasar and Licity and Silver and Nikayla and Melanie and Mia 
for sharing your work and your experience with us this evening. Uh, good night, everyone, and thank you for coming.